Hey developers, my name is Anthony and I'm a Circle Developer Evangelist. In this video, we'll be showing you how to build a Web3 wallet generator using Circle's Web3 services, which offer a range of SDKs and APIs. Programmable wallets enable developers to create and embed secure Web3 wallets into their apps. This exercise will get you familiar with the process of generating Web3 wallets at scale for your users in every state and multiple countries. Let's take a quick look at what the app does. Our app uses social login, enabling users to easily onboard using their Apple and Google accounts. After logging in, there's a REST API call to tell Circle's Web3 services to generate a wallet for the user. The app then shows information about each wallet, like its balance and address. Once these wallets are created, you can transfer tokens into these wallets from another wallet, and the balance will update. The REST API and iOS SDK were both used in creating this app. And these two products allow devs to build applications that generate secure wallets that can be used to store digital assets like NFTs or digital currencies like USDC or any, any other token. There in this video, we'll be showing you the main components of our wallet generator app, but you can find the full open source code in Circle's GitHub. Links to this repo and docs are in the description below. There are two types of wallets you can create with Circle Web3 services, user controlled or developer controlled. For this project, we'll be focusing on user-controlled wallets. These wallets give users full control and prevent Circle or developers from accessing or moving a user's assets without their approval. User-controlled wallets are secured with a PIN number that they select, and it must be entered to approve certain transactions. Circle's iOS SDK provides a very nice customizable experience with pre-made UIs for tasks like onboarding, account recovery, and approving transactions. However, there's a unique way that these UIs are displayed, challenge IDs. When in interacting with the REST API, sometimes there is a challenge ID as an API response. That means that the user needs to complete a challenge to verify their identity. Challenge IDs are provided to the wallet SDK, which displays a UI in your app. And the current user must complete the challenge, like entering a PIN or answering security questions to complete the transaction. Challenges are basically security checkpoints. They usually occur when someone's doing secure transactions like transferring a digital asset out of a wallet or resetting a pin. So now let's take a look at the full architecture of our solution. And this consists of our iOS wallet generator app, which has that wallet SDK integrated, um, the Circle REST API and our test server, which serves as a secure proxy that communicates directly with Circle's REST API. After our user logs in for the first time, there's a request made to Circle's REST API through our test server to create the new Circle user. The API returns a challenge ID, and this is where the iOS SDK takes over and displays a UI to onboard the user before creating the actual wallet. After the user completes the challenge, which in this case is setting your PIN and answering a few security questions, the response is sent back to Circle's REST API. If the challenge succeeds, Circle's Web3 services makes a request to create the wallet for the user. The test server polls for a status on the creation of the wallet. And when the wallet is created, the wallet information is returned to the iOS app so we can display it. You can also set up webhooks to receive status updates on your server. So next, we're going to be moving on to the setup process. So to get started with Circle Web3 Services, you'll need a Circle Developer account, and it just takes a few minutes to set up. With your Circle Developer account, you can create API keys, view API logs, and more. Circle has created an open source test server using Next.js, and you can clone this uh, test server from Circle's GitHub repo. The server is a secure proxy between the iOS app and Circle's REST API, and it prevents exposure of your secret credentials like your API keys. So let, now let's take a look at the iOS app code. The main class you should be really paying attention to is the Circle Wallet View model. This contains the code that interacts with the test server and iOS SDK. The create and init user function is called when a user logs in for the first time. It's makes a POST request to our test server endpoint. The server securely forwards the request to Circle's REST API using our API key, and this creates a new user. So let's take a closer look to what's happening on our test server after the iOS app makes a request to create a new user. Our user endpoint on the test server um, first generates a UUID, and this is used for the new user ID. 
and it sends a series of post requests to the Circle REST API. The first request is a post to the user's endpoint to create a new user ID. This user ID represents a user's account and all the associated wallets, assets, and transactions with that account. Next, we make a post request to the token endpoint to get a session token and encryption key. And these are both used for certain requests. Each session lasts 60 minutes, and when the session expires, you must generate another session token. And then finally, we send a post request to the user initialize endpoint. And this initializes a user account and generates wallet for the blockchain specified in the request that we made. So in this code, we're creating wallets on Matic, Ethereum, and Avalanche testnets. The user ID, token, encryption key, and challenge ID from this series of requests are returned to the iOS app. This is where the execute challenge function comes into play. When creating a user, the user must first set their PIN code and answer some security questions. This user experience is provided entirely by Circle's iOS SDK. So all you have to really do is provide it with the user token, encryption key, and challenge IDs. And the appropriate UI will take over the user experience and take the user through that entire flow. The SDK execute call takes a list of challenge IDs because there might be multiple challenges to complete. So on the test server, we do this making a couple of calls, one to retrieve the main details of the wallet and another series of calls to retrieve the token balances of each wallet. You can find this code in our test server in two endpoints, the wallets and the wallets balance endpoint. From our wallets endpoint, we make a get request with the user session token to get the user's wallet's details, like the wallet IDs, the addresses, and which blockchains each wallet is on. Next, we make a get request to Circle's balances endpoint with each wallet ID to get the wallet token balances for each one. We then send this information back to the iOS app to display in the UI. In this video, I showed you how to build a Web3 wallet generator using Circle's iOS SDK and REST API. You should now have a good understanding of what Circle's wallet SDK can do, so now you can integrate wallets into your own apps. Check out Circle's docs if you prefer following along with the text, and there's additional docs in Circle's GitHub repo. Hopefully this video was helpful, and thanks for watching.